and gentlemen, we already went through the rules of the dressing room. We did a good clean bow. His trunks are right where they are. Keep your punches up above here. Same thing, keep your punches up above him. Touch him up, come out of the bow, we have the best man to win. The amazing boy, Kin Shiro Taraji, 27 years old, a record of 16 and 0 with nine knockouts. Tim, he's been impressive since winning a world he's title. Very and impressive. Ten pro fights. I, I, I like him a lot. He's a technician. He has a good jab, great fundamentals, and he's a body snatcher. He's, he lands 7.6 body shots around. Across from the amazing boy. Taraji in the ring tonight, Randy Razor Petalcorn out of General Santos, the Philippines, a southpaw out of the Philippines. You know all about that, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are a little lighter of a weight class, though. Petalcorn in the black and gold trunks and Taraji in the uh, digi camo, if you will. Nice. You can see both of these guys just up and down, trying to get in their rhythm. You can see the southpaw stance of Petal Corn. Taraji has fought three southpaws in his last fight. Rado, who happened to pull out with a lung injury four weeks ago, uh, he was prepared for the southpaw. It's his second southpaw in a row. Second southpaw in a row, but you know, Petal Corn had four weeks to get ready for this fight. Kenshiro Taraji had to make some adjustments in this camp. He had four weeks to get ready for the southpaw. You know, his championship pedigree should allow him to be able to figure things out in there. To the body with the left hand goes Pedal Corin and Taraji shooting that jab out of the orthodox stance. This is the seventh title defense for Kinshiro Taraji. Mm, I like that what Taraji did just a minute ago. He shot the jab from underneath. He found a little gap, a little space between the guard of Petacorin and was able to sneak a nice little jab underneath his, underneath his guard. Petacorin getting his second shot now at a world title. In fact, in his first shot at a world title back in October of 2018, he lost to the IBF champion Felix Alvarado, who was originally slated to be Taraji's opponent tonight. Yeah, Petacorn, he's a road warrior, Christina. I mean, he's fought twice in China, four times in Australia, and this is his first time fighting here in Japan. You know, so he has a lot of experience in traveling, fighting against guys in their hometown. Petacorn popping that jab. This is with the right hand and extends that left out of the southpaw stance. Lands into the body a few times here in the first round. Not a lot of offense from Kinshiro here in round one, Tim. Kind of just get the feel of things. You got to get the feel of things. Yep. You know, get the distance down with the southpaw. Get the feet in position. And and also and also land his jab, Christina. Yeah. Got to get his jab working. Yep, it's been all jabbing for Petal Corin here in round one. This is really a special night in Yokohama, Japan, this card they put together at the end of the year. And we really have a stacked card for you. As we mentioned, three world title fights. As we look here in the corner of Kinshiro Taraji, and we talked about it, Tim, 16 professional fights and you win a world title in only your 10th. How special is that for the people I mean, that don't know? You know, it's a, that shows you that, you know, you are a special fighter, you know, winning a world championship with 12 professional fights. I mean, we saw a young guy, Teofimo Lopez, you know, last week win the world championship, his 14th professional fight. And then you also have a guy like Shakur Stevenson. Correct. And then you have Lomachenko. So the earlier you can get that world championship, that shows everybody how special you are as a fighter. And and speaks to the amateur pedigree that you've had as well. That's got you ready. It doesn't take too long. You don't need yeah, 10, I mean, 20, you don't need 30 fights before you get ready right. for a world it's title. It's a new way. Yep. It's a new way. And he's 27 years old, so. He's right at the start of his prime. Round two, schedule 4-12. 12, 12 rounds in the junior flyweight division, the WBC World Championship on the line. Kinshiro Taraji is the champion, making his seventh title defense tonight. What do you want to see here in round two from the champ? Well, from the champ, he's just, right now, he's trying to get his rhythm right now. You see him bouncing back and forth, trying to get his jab established. 
trying to locate distance. But I have to say one thing. You know, Petacorin, he's a busy, busy fighter. When he gets his work rate going, he throws between about 81 punches around. Yeah, triple jab know? and a left hand right there, Tim. Yeah, but right now it doesn't seem like he's throw he's able to throw 80 81 punches around right now. You know, the jab and the movement of Taraji is giving him some problems. It's exactly the way you take away a volume puncher. Petacorin is definitely the one letting his hands go more. Has been first on the majority of these exchanges here as Taraji tries to establish his job and again with that left hand to the body for Petal Corin. Triples up on that jab. Yeah, one of the punches that I'm looking for for Taraji is, is the right hand. The oh, right yeah. hand got a strong right against, hand. This, is it against the southpaw. It's a very effective punch. It's going to come a long way for these guys with short arms though and fighting that, uh, you know, an orthodox versus the southpaw to get that right hand. Well, one of the things you got to realize, Christina, is that once you touch your opponent with the jab, you're in range to throw that power shot. So let it go. And that's what Taraji needs to do to land his right hand. Taraji trying to establish that jab, Tim, that you mentioned. And occasionally he's taking a, a left hand to the body because he's stepping straight back after shooting that jab. Yeah, Pedro Corn's doing a good job when he throws that jab, doubling it up, then following it with a hook there. Following him out. There's two things that happen when you're fighting against a southpaw and you're an orthodox fighter. First, you got to fight. Look at the lead, the lead feet of both guys. They're lined up on the same side, so you're gonna get a lot of, you know. Stepping on that stepping front on, foot. Yeah, stepping yep. on that front foot. And then also when they throw their power hands, they end up on the same side. So sometimes you'll see a lot of head clashes when the southpaw versus the orthodox fighter. They battle for that outside foot position with that lead foot. And again, that left hand from Pedacorn lands. It's been his most successful punch of the fight as he turns up the action here at the end of round two. Pedacorn off to a strong start here the first two rounds. Yes, he is. Oh, and almost lands that left at the end of the fight, at the end of the round, excuse me, towards next year, if he is able to remain victorious tonight and keep that undefeated record at 16-0 as we're looking into the corner of Kinshiro Taraji. Christina, to get back in this fight, he has to change some things up. You know, Taraji, he's doing the same thing. He's using the jab, he's stepping back two steps every now and then, stepping back one step, and he's getting followed out. But he needs to let some punches go. Traji's been consistent with the jab. Or excuse me, Pedal Corn's been consistent yes. with the jab. You get the sense that Tarazi's just trying to time him. <laughs> you know, he's get, trying to get in his there rhythm with the speed. And there's the, the right hand that he finally lets go is what you were calling for, Tim. Yeah, you were right when you said it was he's trying to time him. That's exactly what Taraji's trying to do. He's trying to time the rushes of Petacorin. Finally lets that left hand go as well. He likes nice. to throw that left hook to the body. And I, what I liked from Petacorin right there was is that he got his head off the line to throw that left hand. And, and that's something that he's probably learned from. Oh, and a good from, counter right hand from the champ. Learned from Manny Pacquiao because that's one of Manny Pacquiao's signature punches. Nice little check hook right there from they, Petacorn. They both throw and land at the same time, but Petacorn, the aggressor here. Finally, though, the champ Kinshiro has picked up the activity rate in round three. Still really wide stance, Tim, for the champ as well. Very wide stance. It's like putting yourself in quicksand. Right, you're not going to generate a lot of power with your base that wide. And you're not going to be able to move laterally as quickly. And he's almost lunging forward with those punches as he connects the right hand to the body of Pedal Corin. His best combination of the fight so far. You see, Christina, he put them together. Twos and threes right there instead of one punch at a time. And strong jab there for the champ as he's feel that he's starting to pick up and he drops him with the shot to the body. Good right hand.
as the crowd gets into the fight. Can the amazing boy, Kenshiro, he drops him again. Petalcorin beats the count. There is no three knockdown rule. He's got 24 seconds. Can he escape? Can he stay alive as the champion continues to put on the pressure? Very poised though, Tim. Not rushing in. Oh, he's not. He's just looking for an opportunity to land that body shot. And there again with the right hand to the body. Petalcorn answers. Taraji oh, again tagging right the body there. right on the belt line. Tim, he's got to be able to get up. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round here. These W. BC rules and he makes it out of the round. Wow. Down three times, Tim, in round yeah. three. The body work. The body work. Tim. I mean, if you can't land to the head, you want to land to the body. And that's exactly what Taraji does here. Taraji throws a throwaway jab right there. Nice full extension with the right hand to the body. Like I just got to saying, if you can't hit the head, the body is always there. Nice little shot Not just in the solar the plex. The guard, a little bit on the belt line right there. Drops him for the third time in round three. We talked about Kinshiro being special. He has been a dominating champ as well. Tim, in his last five defenses, four of them have been by knockout. By knockout, absolutely. Yep. But like I told you in the beginning, I love the body work by this young man. Love the body work. And he did it to both sides there in round three on his way to three knockouts of the challenger, Randy Petalcorn. Let's see how Petalcorn has recovered here as we start round four. Scheduled for 12. Junior flyweight WBC world title on the line. Oh, and a nice combination there landed in Petalcorn. Seems to have recovered pretty well as to nice go back to the body. This is some really good action here. Petacorin is fighting hard right now, trying to bag up Taraji. He doesn't want him to get to his body, so he's trying to let his hands go. But Taraji gets some respect. To the body. Tim, this body assault has been vicious here. Petacorin doing a better job of taking them here in round four. His offense is his defense for the most part for, for Petacorin. Yeah. Exactly. Again that to the body, right that's so a vicious left hand to so the body. And I don't know if Petal Corn wants any more. It's over. That's it. You called it, Tim. It's over. And still, the amazing boy, Kinshiro Taraji, remains undefeated with a fourth round knockout of Randy Razor Petal Corin. After that second round, Tim, it was really him getting into that rhythm and being able to find that work to the body that really broke down pedal corn early. Yeah, that's what it, exactly what it was. Um, you know, we as fighters, once you find that key <laughs> and they can't stop you from doing it, I mean, it just, I mean, it, it, it pushes you, you know, during the fight. And that's exactly what it did for Taraji. Taraji just stepped up the intensity and was just digging down to the body. He hurt him, dropped him several times and finished the fight like a champion supposed to. And I I really hope we get a chance to see him in a unification bout next because I think that he is the best of the best when it comes to the division. He's impressive. He is. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. now to make this one official. Take it away, Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, eight seconds. In round number four, our referee in charge, Frank Garza, stops the contest. He's the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated and still the WBC Life Liveweight Champion of the World, the amazing boy, Kenshiro.
right, let's go to the ring for the official announcements of our particulars. So, the まずは前回起用通じて最強とされるいわゆるパウンドフォーパウンドの最上位に長らくランクされていた将来の伝道よりも確実視されるプロボクサーが赤コーナープロセンセスクエア四十九戦四十七勝敗戦は世界タイトル
Guessing that's round two in Japanese. Here we go. The principals in the ring, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez and DML Diocos. Diocos with about six pawing jabs there, trying to keep Gonzalez at bay. Yeah, when you fight against a, a, a high volume puncher like uh, Gonzalez, you gotta have a stiff, sharp jab. You know, you just can't have a pawing jab or a flicking jab. You gotta, you gotta get his attention. Oh, and uh, Chocolatito got his attention right there with the combination as Diocos tries to come back with a body combination of his own, finishing up top with the left hand and then an overhand right. And back to the body goes Chocolatito. Diocos got some fast hands, but no pop behind his yeah, punches. Yeah, just slapping Nothing some of those punches. To stop Gonzalez, keep him off of him. He's almost just slapping. He's not really getting those hands turned over there. As again, a left hook to the body lands, and Diocos gets his right back. It's so discouraging when you hit a guy eight times like that, and he doesn't. He bag doesn't up even off move. Of you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so discouraging. He's just standing right there in his face. And again, down to the body, then back up top. Strong right hand from Chocolatito. They're now letting leather by Big right hand from Chocolatito. And Diocos is hurt right now. As he unleashes the body attack, then back up top. Again, left hook to the body. Oh, big right hand. My goodness. They're considering that a knockdown as he is being held up by the ropes. For now, Diocos would like to continue, no, even if his face doesn't say so. Listen to me. This is the time when you're in the, in the corner and you, you see your man taking that much punishment. Oh, my goodness. You throw in a towel and save your man. Relentless attack from Chocolatito. You have to save your fighter. Right hand, left to the body, back up top. You name it, he's throwing it right now, and that's enough. Good job, bro. That's enough. Referee stops in and calls a halt to this fight after a barrage was to do. Yes. And um, hopefully he'll earn himself in 2020 another shot at a world title. If anybody deserves it, it's him.
Ladies and gentlemen, from the Yokohama Arena, we present our next world title attraction brought to you by Taken Promotions. This bout is sanctioned by the IBF, the President Daryl Peoples, Supervisor in Attendance, Anibal Miramontes. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside, from the United States, Jonathan Davis, from South Africa, Dion Duarte, and from Japan, Kazutoshi Yoshida. Introducing our third man of the ring, the referee in charge, from Argentina, Mario Gonzalez. All right, Fight fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the IBF Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the defending champion fighting out of the red corner, wearing red and white trunks, hailing from KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. He weighed in at the flyweight limit of 112 pounds. With a tremendous record of 38 wins and two losses, he has 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in the 13th defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the longtime defending IBF flyweight champion of the world, introducing Maruti, baby face Talani. Trunks with multicolor trim, fighting out of and representing his home of Yokohama, Japan. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 112 pounds. His record stands at 28 wins, six losses, with 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the current world rank challenger and the former three division champion of the world, introducing Akira All right, as we get ready to make this official here, there's a little bit of a delay here, but you know, Tim, you heard the ovation from Akira Yagashi. I anticipate him to feed off the crowd as early exactly. as, as possible and getting another world title shot, but That's let's exactly send it up now to Jimmy. You know, we Jimmy's going to hear about Jimmy's gonna take it away. Hold on one second. You know, we hear about the, the cons of fighting at home. We never hear about the pros of fighting at home. And just as you said, you know, you have to support from the crowd. And then if you're in a tough spot, you know, the, the crowd can, can boost you. The fans can boost your energy. And plus, Christina, I have to say that, you know, there's a little, it could be if the fight's close, a little pen pencil whipping going on. You know, you know, home field advantage. Okay. You know, it's in every sport, Christina. There, there is. That's the advantage of fighting at home as well. We'll see if that comes to fruition. I mean, Tim, <laughs> this is a fight that you and I have been very excited about. Boxing fans around the world, on my Twitter, social media, people are, are setting their alarms for yeah. this one. It is taking on, as you said, the hometown hero, the three-division world champ, Akira Yaigashi. Yeah, Igashi is 36 years old, two months away from being 37. So these guys are, are, are up there in terms of age. But... They have been giving fight fans all they can handle all these years as far as the entertaining fights that they have been in. Is this the last go at a world title for Yaigashi, Tim, at 37, almost 37 years old? We'll see you tonight. We're going to see you tonight. But right now, I like the, the movement of Yagashi. You know, I, I would love to get, I would love to see him actually use his jab, a stiff jab like that. There he goes. Doubled up on the jab, followed it with the right hand. Jabbed on his way out. Umtalani in the white and red trunks. See, Umtalani's a volume puncher. 
he has to be set to punch. So you have, if you if you move on him, you make him pick up his feet, and you keep changing ranges. That's exactly what Yagashi's doing. He's changing ranges. He'll come in mid range or throw a combination. Now he's moving out. That's exactly how you fight against a volume puncher. Higashi circling to his right. Thalani not really throwing any jabs yet to start this fight. He seems to just be stalking his opponent, having a hard time cutting off the ring right now as he finally throws that left hand to stop Yagashi in his tracks, and Yagashi lets off a three punch combination. Delani looks to let that left hand go. Yeah, anytime Yagashi sits still, look for Untangani to pick up the pace and try to get to him and definitely try to break him down to the body. Yagashi continuing to circle to his right. Then stepping now to the middle of the ring and letting his hands go is Yagashi. Yagashi ranked by the IBF number 14 out of 112 pounds, but he's been in 13 world championship fights. He's the former IBF junior lightweight world champion has made a couple defenses of that and also the WBC lineal flyweight champion. So both of these very decorated fighters here giving it one last go as Infilani looks to defend his title once again. That sticks out to you with these guys, the champions at the lower weight class. They're able to be successful time and time again, guys like uh, Rudy Methalani, who has been at world. They they'll fight each other more than more than once. You know, it's not a lot of guys in these lower weight classes, so you could see a champion reign for many many years because there's not a whole lot of guys to face. But these guys, are particularly, they special. You know, being at this age, still fighting at the highest level. And they both still say they feel young and they still feel like they have something to offer to right. the sport of boxing. And that's why I think so many of us were excited to see this fight tonight. You mentioned well, some of the guys that they fought in, in, in Yegashi. He fought Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, who we saw win in, in a second round knockout earlier tonight. And uh, Imtilani, the name that sticks out to you too, is Nonino Donaire and Zolani yeah. Tete. So these guys have definitely been through the ringer and have a ton of experience. Yes. Look for Imtilani to cut off the ring just as he does there as he digs down to the body right. of Yagashi. But y Yagashi coming back with his combinations. But what I saw in the first the first round was I saw Yagashi establish his range, use his feet, and slow down mm, Thelani. Because the, the Lani, mm, the Lani, he likes <laughs> He's a high-volume puncher, man. And he, you have to be sitting in front of him so he can work his hands. Yeah, and that's not what Yagashi is letting him do right now as he continues to circle in the same direction. And that left hook to the body is what's going to get him to stand still from Thelani the more he lets yeah. that left hand go. Doubling up on the jab is Yagashi. You know, we don't get a chance to talk to these guys. We didn't get to sit in fighter meetings and figure out what the game plan and the things, you know, the, the three things they must do and must not right. do that have become so signature to you. But you get a sense that stick and move, stick and move is the game plan for Yagashi. Yeah, that's the game plan, and it should be the should be the game plan. Because as soon as he sits still, just for a moment... He gets tagged to the body like it, that. He gets tagged to the body, and the combination starts flying from him. The line. Yagashi having success here early. And that's the definition of stick. I mean, he literally stuck that jab out there and then turned and ran away. I don't really like him turning his back there like that, but Mdalani's going to have to continue to work that body to try to get Yagashi to stand still. Yagashi's not going to be able to with the right hand pace. to the body. Moving around like that, he's going to have to choose his spots wisely. Well, he is in tremendous shape, Tim, and he maintains that his motivation is his physical fitness, and he really does want to work towards getting that fourth belt. So we'll see if he can keep up this circling around the ring as... Mthalani now goes on the offensive here in the center of the ring. The jab by Mthalani. That's spacing. 
And still to come, our main event, 12 rounds of WBA middleweight world title action. The champion of Japan, Ryota Murata, taking on the challenger out of Montreal, Canada, Stephen Butler. It's powerful, man. It's the man he gets most of his knockouts with. He bring it to the head and also to the body of his opponent. So. And I like that he doesn't waste punches. He's yeah. very, efficient very efficient when he does choose to let yeah. his hands go. Here we go, round three scheduled for 12. IBF flyweight world champion, the cha the challenger, Akira Yaigashi, taking on the champion, Marudi Mathalani. Tim, a couple rounds of action. Uh, how do you have this fight scored the first you couple You know what, rounds? I really I, I really have, don't, don't score the fight, Christina, but I, I like the first two rounds for Yagashi. Uh -huh. He boxed really well. Control distance with his movement, letting his hands go with combinations. That last round, Funtalani seemed to find home with the body shots. And there's a body and shot closing from Yagashi. that gap. Yep. You, see him, you see him cut off that angle of Yagashi right there with the left hook. You know, a lot of times when you have a guy that moves, Christina, you know, you don't necessarily have to punch at the target. You got to punch where you think the target's going to be. And that's exactly what Utalani's doing. Well, that, yeah, that's what he has to do because Yagashi has continued to move and almost, you know, in the same circular uh, direction, this time to the left and, and, and back to the right, but that's because those body shots are starting to land from Utalani. He wasn't li really letting his jab go in the first two rounds of this fight. It's been mostly power shots as he... See, nice tie-up the right body there. there. That's smart. Nice, nice tie-up. That was Tina. smart. You know, that's one thing you want to do when you have a guy that throws, likes to throw a lot of punches at you. You want to tie up, tie him up to break his rhythm. Yagashi tied up right there. That was a very smart move, veteran move by him. Talani taking advantage. He has a almost five-inch reach advantage over Yagashi. You can really see it when he actually does let that jab hand go. Yeah, that's Utalani, a nice left wanted, hand right there. You know, like a high volume puncher like this, like Utalani, with long arms, he's the hardest guys to face in boxing. Right along with the you know superior boxers like a Floyd Mayweather, Christina. You know, but the way you isolate all of that is with movement, a good solid jab, and with timing. Oh, and Yagashi timed that punch perfectly, exactly. that right hand. Catch him as he's coming in. And working through the guard there is Yagashi looking fresh early in this fight, as you mentioned, Tim. Ken, how much, how long can he keep that work rate, that yes. movement, and that tempo up is the question. I think when he sits out there on the wing, not doing anything, and I'm talking about Yagashi, you know, he's a sitting duck. And all Mutalani does is shoot a jab or just shoot a straight shot at him, and he hits him every single time. He yeah, needs to a nice to right move. hand, yep. Mutalani got the right hand in there, and Gashi, with his own counterattack, doing some good work to the body here in round three. Action is definitely heating up. That was a good round. A lot of back and forth action there, Tim. clear for us in the Yagashi corner. No, it's not as clear for us, but I do see something, Christina, and I saw it from the from the beginning is you see the scar tissue around the eye yes. of Yagashi. A lot of wear and tear. You see the eye swollen already. And he fights through all of it. All of it. Beautiful. Even though I find it hard to believe that on the paperwork he's the cuts say none. <laughs> I don't know about I don't I don't know about all that. Alright, round four scheduled for twelve. Flyweight action, the champion Mthalani picking things up in round three, turning it on, but Yagashi's had much success moving around the outside of the ring and working the body of Mthalani here in the early rounds. A big looping right hand from Mthalani. Nice combination right there from Yagashi. Again with the left hand. Only if Yagashi had a jab, 
you know, he really doesn't. He's got really a little sneak. Yeah, I mean, he, he hasn't really thrown a lot of these combinations off the chat, but he does have that sneaky right uppercut. He's been able to land through those looping shots of Delaney. I'd keep an eye out for that right uppercut. Yeah, hey, Christina, but if he had a jab, a nice little stiff jab, then he'll be able to control spacing, the space a lot, a lot easier. Yeah, instead he's having to control it with his feet as he continues to move forward and land the barrage of punches to the body now of Ibdelani as he keeps that high guard up. And this is what we came to see right here, Tim. This is exactly what we came to see, Christina. Back and forth action, beautiful fistic fury. You see the man with the shorter arms. He's winning the battle on the inside, and that's Yugashi. Now you guys, you got to get ready for the return fire from Umtalani. Right through the guard, Umtalani with the left and right hand. Beautiful crisp combinations. And you know what? Yagash is not moving around anymore, is he, Tim? He's confident no. in standing right there trying to bang with Umtalani. Now this is when you tie him up, Christina. Now you get some. Now you take some back and <laughs> forth. <laughs> these guys heat up the action. This is why everybody got up early in Great the Great volley right there. To watch these that? two go to work. Some beautiful work here. Well, that's the one thing I like about like about these smaller fighters is that you don't have to worry about them not throwing punches. They love to throw punches and bunches. We love to watch, don't we? Huh. Stiff jab from Umtalani, followed by a right hand, and then Yegashi gets in the body work. That sneaky right uppercut I was talking about from Yagashi. Now oh, Yagashi's fighting Untalani's fight now. He's sitting still right in front now. And you said it, Tim. How how long can he continue to circle around the outside of the ring and work off that jab? And it took a whole two and a half rounds. And there he is, standing right in the middle <laughs> of the ring, exchanging with the champ, I mean, Untalani. I mean, Christina, you gotta you got to fight the inside, but you got to choose your battles wisely. You know, fighting the inside. Get Beautiful. the advantage, then get back on the outside. That was a great round. Some swelling has developed over the left eye of Yegashi. That scar tissue, Tim, you were talking about primarily from that strong right hand and that jab of Talani. I think both guys hurt each other that last round. He looks like he's hurting for some air right about now. No, he's just trying to, get air in, trying, to get, trying to get some oxygen into his system. A lot of punches being thrown in that round. Right, as they touch him up here for round five. Let's see if Yegashi continues in this round, Tim, to just stand in the middle or get back to what was working for him early, which was moving around the outside of the ring and taking a look at the punches. You see that body work from Yegashi. 26 to 6, Tim. A mm. body work advantage for Yegashi. Yegashi doing the right thing by going down to the body of Umtalani. You know, that's how you... That's how you Sipe the gas tank. Take some of that energy away from your opponent. And Umtalani has just fought one time in 2019. This is second fight. Same thing, though, for Yagashi. So it was kind of something I was thinking about before this fight is whose gas tank's going to hit empty first. Yes. Because you know they're going to they're gonna unleash and unload as they have particularly in round four. Yagashi's invested in the body work, and that body work could show up later in the fight for him. See, that's a stiff jab from Umtalani. That's not, that's not a slapping jab. That's a sharp, stiff jab. And right back to the bread and butter for Yagashi is that body work, working both sides, and then he finishes up top. See, he has the advantage. Yagashi definitely has the advantage on the inside when he's close because he has a shorter arm. Whoa, you know? beautiful left hand landed from Yagashi and that exchanged him. See, and I like, I like what he's doing. He's smothering them now, bodying up with them. Yagashi, he worked, let his hands go, then he smothers Untalani. Oh, and another big right hand upstairs, then down to the body from Yagashi. 
gets a warning to keep his head up from the referee. There's that right uppercut again. And a nice punch combination there from Thelani. Yeah, Thelani forced him out, you know. What do you, mean, what do you mean by back. that force? So he forced him out. So he let his hands go and what Yagashi did, he stepped back, created space, and then Untalani was able to deliver the four-punch combination. But if he would have stepped in and smothered him, those shots would have never hit him. Never would have been able to get those shots off, Christina. See, out at distance like that, that's Untalani all day. A lot of those shots are hitting the gloves, though, Tim. They get through. That right hand got through from Imtilani. There it is again. Yagashi and Imtilani answers. They seem to be content just taking each other's punches to get their own <laughs> off. <laughs> you know a little something about that too, Tim. Yeah, I, you know, I, I love the fight, Christina. That's right. You were a hell of a fighter, I Tim. love the fight. We know that. But I can box, too. And, and so can both of these guys. I mean, that's what they showed early, but they seem to be content just mixing it up in the middle of the ring, and we're content to sit by and watch it, especially at 2-something in the morning here on the West Coast. And, and still to come, we're inching closer to our main event, the WBA world title fight, Rayota Murata and Steven Butler. Tim, let's take a look at a couple of replays here. A lot of body it's work that from body Yagashi. Work, yes, Yagashi. Investing in the body work. That could show up later in the fight. That's exactly how you drain your man. Nice little overhand right over a jab of Timbani. Right on the temple. This some good work. Back and forth really action right there. Good action. I think there was a lot of questions after that loss in 2017. Yagashi suffered to Milan Melindo. He he lost by first round knockdown after being knocked out. Excuse me, after being knocked down three times. And you know, a lot of people thought, is he done? Is he is he is his story? And Umphelani said, uh uh uh, not so easy. I've been in world championship fights nine times. I'm not letting that belt go. Not tonight. A beautiful work right there by Yagashi. Letting his hands go and then smothering Untalani. Untalani just lunging forward now with these shots. Oh. oh a jump <laughs> uppercut. <laughs> now he's back on his movement. And Yagashi's changing. And his hands. Oh, my goodness. The no. levels and the angles are impressive. The levels, the angles, and he's changing ranges. Like, he's, he'll get in close. He'll be mid-range. He'll let a combination go. Then he'll get out. He'll dance a little bit. Beautiful. Leaping uppercuts. He'll get inside, dig down to the body, and then smother his man, Untalani, doing a lot of good work. Yagashi's yeah, just been so efficient when it comes to the body, too, with that left hand. And then he goes again with the left hand to the body as Umtalani tries to use the jab to keep him at distance. But, Tim, as you mentioned, he's just do doing such a good job changing it up. Yeah, and then what I noticed is, is that as soon as the round starts, what Yagashi's doing, he's jumping right on Umtalani. Back to the body. Nice combination there by Thelani, using that range and using that length of the yeah, jab to set up that combination. Yagashi's doing a good job, though. He's, oh, he's avoiding that shot. Right See, hand. It's exactly what you need to do. Nice chopping right hand right over the top of the jab. That was thrown from a little bit too close from Umtalani. That mid-range from Umtalani seems to be the sweet spot for him. Yagashi's doing great work when he is able to get... And, and close that distance on the inside. He's going mid-range, and then he's getting out of range, Christina. Yep. That's what's working That's for key. him. That's key. That's key. As he sneaks in a right hand there, and these jump punches from Yagashi. It's like a video game. That's good work. Have you ever tried one of those, Tim? Nah, you jump know what? Punch. I probably have. <laughs> you know, I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> what kind of 
takes away your power there. All that power you're supposed to generate from your base. We can jump up and land these punches. Splitting the guard right here is Yagashi. Yep, the line, he leaned it forward, put those earbuds on. Left a little gap, a little space. A little opening for that uppercut, the left uppercut of Yagashi. See, all that body work does is it gets your opponent to lean forward. So you go through his body, he has to absorb those body work. So he's going to sit still in front of you, he's going to lean him, he's going to tilt a little forward. So leave him for the uppercut. Actually, he's landed a couple of those uppercuts. It's all, it's there all, all day. Yeah. That's it's why Imbalani's all... got to get in and get out. Yes. Getting ready to start round seven. Halfway through what has been a spectacular fight to watch in the flyweight division. As we take a look at the total punches thrown, 407 for Imbalani. Seven of those only to the body, 53 of the 377 through six rounds for Yegashi. That's been his bread and butter. Imtalani having a great start to round seven, and Yegashi seems fine, content just being standing right there in the middle of the ring, taking the punches. He was moving around early in the fight, picked his shots, but right now, you ask when that. When that would start to slow down, I think we're starting right. to see it right here around seven. seven. Right now. He's trying to get his second win right now, so he's just taking a little off the gas pedal. Yagashi is right now, taking this round off. <laughs> Looping right hands from Imtalani. That's how you turn your man. You see how he turned him? You know, you come around the guard, especially when the guy has his hand straight up. Sharp little hooks. From Yegashi. Good counter. Again, body, body, uppercut. Body, body, uppercut. It seems to be the rhythm for Yegashi. Time after time, that combination has worked for him. Yes, so it if it's has. working, continue with continue it. Continue with it, buddy. You gotta, it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a tremendous pace these guys it are playing is. at right it's now. It is. It's crazy. And they exchange body shots there. Mm. And to the body Good goes Imthalani. Imthalani. Four piece up top and then one to the body. Mm. Again, right hand to the body from Imthalani. Then back goes Yegashi. Back goes Imthalani. We knew we were going to see a lot of punches. This is what everybody stayed up for, woke up for, and they have delivered through seven rounds in Yokohama, Japan. These guys are going at it, Tim. Yes, they are. Punches of Kinshiro that broke him down and eventually led to the stoppage. You see the power punch percentage right there, 48. Anytime that gets near 50, close to 50, that spells knockout. And knockout it was for the 27-year-old Kinshiro, improving to 17 and 0. Now 10 knockouts. As we get here to round eight, Mthalani looking to defend his title against. Yes, it has in that last round. It's Mthalani's best round of the fight. Really punching at the right. Oh, range. and he hurt him with a yes. body shot yes, he did. right there. A big right hand yes, from did. Imtalani has Yegashi backed up against the ropes. Yegashi not throwing any punches to save himself. He didn't He's like got to let his hands hurt. go, Tim. He didn't like Imtilani that. Imtalani looking to finish and hear the words and still as the referee breaks him up. Well, you can Tim see Yegashi's got to save himself. He's got to throw some punches here. Nice tie up right there from Yegashi. That's high turn quick. Back to the body goes Imthalani with the left hand. Two, three. And finally, Yegashi answers with the left hand. Christina, I told you the pace was, was a killer pace. And it definitely suited Imthalani. Yegashi hurt early in round eight. Pretty much been in survival mode. 
I mean, these guys have been around and been in some fights that they can just go off natural instinct, and that's somewhat what Yegashi's doing right now, trying to keep himself in this fight. I don't know if thing. he's fully recovered, Tim. No, he's not fully recovered right now. He's trying to buy himself some time right now. But what Untalani needs to do is he needs to go down to back down to the body of Yagashi. That's where he heard him at to start this. To the body. A lot of times when you hurt a guy, you know, you see him, you daze him, buzz him to the head, you forget about the body. No, you need to go back down to the body to keep weakening him and then go back up top. Delani wanted to try to continue to pound to the head and like you said Tim it's actually allowed Yegashi to kind of get his wits about yes. him and get himself back into the last at least 30 seconds of this round here. That's right. As Yegashi <laughs> shows the crowd that he's still alive in this fight. He's still a live dog in there. Yeah you hear the crowd right? They're trying to get their mans up. That's right. And that's what you were talking about, Tim, how when yes. sometimes you got to bite down hard on that mouthpiece. Being at home and having the crowd behind you can help pull you out of those moments. That's right. That's Absolutely. exactly what you said to start the fight. And you can see from these replays, Yagashi was hurt here early in the round, and it was a body shot. Up the middle. Right there. Around the guard, right in the liver. Oh, beautiful shot right there from Untalani. You know, when he commits to the body, he fully committed right there to the body and he hurt Yagashi with that shot the ropes kind of held him up a little bit right there the ropes held him up yeah. I mean he, he grazed him on the sure. ear but as I was saying Christina he hurt him with the body shot but then he goes away from the body work you know and he thinks that he's hurt at the head no leave the head alone go down to the body to open up those head shots two best rounds of the fight for Mthalani back to back. Yeah. I uh, just put together two really, really nice rounds. It'll be interesting to see how the judges have this one scored, Tim. It's been a lot of back and forth action in a lot of these rounds. But those two rounds for Mthalani have been the most clear outside of the early rounds yes. maybe where Yagashi was just kind of moving and jabbing yes. around the outside. Round nine scheduled for 12. Babyface Mthalani looking to defend his IBF 112-pound world title. This will be his third. Two very special fighters here in the ring for your entertainment. <laughs> and entertain they have, Tim. Oh, yes, they have. You know, Christina, they say that the best way to get a man is, is through his stomach. There's a little truth to that. And there's a shot to but, the stomach right there. But I believe the best the way to get rid of a man is just through his stomach also. And that's exactly what Untalani needs to do is go back to the stomach of Yagashi if he wants to stop him or finish him. And it was really the body work of Yagashi that was telling the story early Ooh, in the nice fight right as well. He's been dominant downstairs. Untalani's got a good rhythm now as he plants a right hand to the body. Look at the eyes of Yagashi, swollen. You know, wonder if he can see out of those eyes. A lot of swelling. Something that he's been used to for the majority of his career and what makes a lot of his fights entertaining fights. He, he's, he's fought through some adversity and he lands a big left hand on M. Thelani right there. That was nice. That was actually a catch and shoot. He caught Beautiful. the right hand and then came back with his own left left hook. Mthalani back to finding his range. The crowd chanting Akira for the hometown. A combination from Mthalani snaps the head back of Yegashi and he is hurt once again in round nine. See his mouth open a little bit more here, Tim. Beautiful, Chris, right hand, right through the guards of Yegashi. And Talani just battering yes. Yegashi here in the last 30 seconds of round nine. 
Fortunately for Yegashi, only seven, six, and the referee stops the fight. Wow. Wow. With only five seconds left. Tim. <laughs> I did not see that stoppage coming at I that time. Coming, after the I mean, after what we saw back and forth in this fight. Wow. He was taking some he was taking a lot of punishment. A lot of heavy, heavy artillery coming from Umtalani on Yagashi. Umtalani and still. You see IBF. The eyes. Look at the eyes of Flyweight Yagashi. world champion. And yes, you mentioned it, Tim, the, the swelling of the eyes yeah. and, and the punishment that he'd taken in the last two and, and, and now this being the third round in a row. But I felt like he was still letting his hands go enough to at least get out of that round. But referee steps in and, and had seen enough and saved him from his own self, if you will. Let's send it to Jimmy Lennon Jr. now in the ring to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 54 seconds in round number 9. Our referee Here it is, stops right the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still the idea. Woo!